I think it's simple word. Just it's been very exhilarating and inspiring. And I didn't know what to expect when I came in, but um, because I thought I knew. <laughs> but uh, but it's been awesome uh, meeting with you all, and then learning from all the parallel events, and uh, learning how we, our voice actually matters through this system, though it takes a long time, I think. So um, that part is still frustrating. You can go on from there. I, th I think to follow up on what Ann said, which I totally agree with, is that it doesn't, that we do have a voice and it doesn't matter what the language. We all have a voice. And that there's commonality um, the mission is uh, the same no matter where we live and for us to close our eyes here in the United States and to think that we have all the answers is absolutely naive because I have learned so much from other countries progressive um, advocacy things that they are taking into that it's um, It's, it's almost embarrassing that uh, we say one thing, but then our actions speak louder. As America, excuse me. Now, I'm proud of America, don't get me wrong. <laughs> but we have more to do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Para mí, esta ha sido una experiencia maravillosa. Y he aprendido mucho del sufrimiento de otras mujeres alrededor del mundo. Ha sido bien impactante para mí, es algo que llevo en, en mi corazón y por lo que voy a estar orando y trabajando también adelante. I concur with um, my colleagues here, violence against women and girls is something that I believe that we take for granted here in the United States and we um, need to step up our efforts more to combat um, this kind of these kind of atrocities. One of the things that I was struck with when I uh, went to one of the parallel events was human trafficking and um, FGM, female genital mutilation. Yes. And I feel that as Americans, we need to become more aware of what other women in other parts of the world have to go through just to survive. Would you each introduce yourselves? I am Letitia Wells. I am a pulpit supply in uh, High Point, North Carolina. I live in Reedsville, North Carolina. And just so excited to be your Presbyterian woman, <laughs> ecumenical woman. <laughs> and tell us about the work you do and how it intersects with the theme. Well, the work, um, I recently uh, graduated from McCormick Theological Seminary and did a lot of mission work overseas. I preached in Tanzania and Ghana and South America and just always have been an advocate for the marginalized and people that exist on the fringes of life. I think that we should be a society, a world society, that allows all people the opportunity to have human rights, not just rights because I live in a particular geographic, geographical um, location, but just human rights for all people. And I am Anne Ree Menzi, and uh, I am teaching elder in our church <laughs> and for the last 12 years I've been working in Korean community as a domestic violence advocate, victims advocate and also have been teaching and training uh, the church leaders and other faith leaders in prevention of domestic violence and violence against women and it's been met with rather resistance and silence and, uh, mm. and ignorance and whatever else. But coming here uh, yesterday 
seeing the men who work against domestic violence and all forms of violence against women really lifted me up and gave me back the hope and and then I was saying that that God is you know God's humor is weird because as I was getting ready to to leave uh, and I have left my post at the center but now I'm finding work more energy to work through the church and uh, through my local grassroots community with other women. So cool. I'm excited. Yes. <laughs> I'm Mary Ann Petty, and for the last 15 years I've been an advocate with the Domestic Violence Intervention Program in Iowa City, Iowa. I um, absolutely could let Ann speak for me. And prior to coming, I was beginning to have reservations uh, about where my role is going to fit in and whether I was uh, to remain um, as, an, as an advocate or to whether God was calling me to do something else. And a lot of it was because of frustration with <clears throat> not those that I work with, the, those that I serve, uh, victims of domestic violence, men, women, and children. But with the general community, especially the faith community, um, we somehow or another seem to think that um, it doesn't happen in our house. Mm -hmm. in, our in our church. Not in our church. No, it's not in our church. It's, it's those people. Poor people. That, oh, that's right. Those poor people, mm -hmm. <clears throat> absolutely, with no education. Mm -hmm. And what we know is that's not true. That's right. Um, what I, I will say, <clears throat> I have absolutely been totally energized and motivated and have decided, too bad, I'm just going to be a pain in the <laughs> Keep Persistent. doing what I'm doing, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, and uh, because we're all God's children, mm -hmm. and He absolutely would not be happy with us if we didn't do it exactly. Soy Carmen Ginette Torres. Soy pastora de la Iglesia Presbiteriana en Sabana Grande, Puerto Rico, y a pesar de que en Puerto Rico ayudamos como iglesia, como presbiterio, como sínodo, colaboramos con albergues para las mujeres maltratadas, para víctimas de violencia doméstica, nunca había tenido la experiencia tan, tan cercana de compartir experiencias con otras mujeres que han sido víctimas de violencia en diferentes aspectos de la violencia. Y llevo todas esas experiencias para compartirlas con mi gente, para compartirlas con mi iglesia, con las mujeres de mi presbiterio y de mi sínodo, para nosotras continuar trabajando para erradicar la violencia en nuestra isla y en el mundo. Si podemos. And you said you're going to preach continuously. Yes. <laughs> That's what she said. Sí, a continuar predicando yes. en contra 